It was anything but a pleasant trip to Central Michigan for the Toledo Rockets as we welcome in Mike Robinson from the Toledo Rocket Radio Network. And Mike Rob, it's easy to dwell on the negatives. Let's talk about some positives to begin this. The way Toledo played in the fourth quarter, the way they came back forced overtime, yeah. that showed the heart of this team. It would be easy to pack it in and say, we lost this game around the road, we're not coming back. They didn't do that. They did come back, force that overtime session against the Chips. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, you talked about pleasant things in Mount Pleasant. Shout out to Pete Seymour for filling in for me this weekend. He did an excellent job on the radio. And outside of that, the Rockets had a great game plan in the second half. The first half is just as a troublesome of woes, you know, finding the rhythm of the offense, finally putting Finn in the game. We saw what it did in the second half, Mark. You know, the first half, there's still a lot of things they got to get straightened out and cleaned up, especially with the rhythm with that offensive line. I've never been a fan of the two quarterback system, yeah. and I think we have finally got to the point with the Rockets are not going to go to that two quarterback system anymore. Daquan Finn got the start. They stayed with Finn the entire game. Moving forward, it would appear as if Daquan Finn will be the starting quarterback for the Toledo Rockets. I think we've seen enough evidence through the first half of the season. The offense works better with Finn in the game. Well, you know, the judge and jury has to be Jason Candle, you know, when he makes that type of decision. You know, I think everybody else could see as well, you know, Daquan Finn was definitely the right move to go, definitely with Central Michigan. You saw the points he was able to put on the board. His efficiency all season has been on point. But what has not been on, on point and which the jury and he's still on trial for is his passing ability. He has to find a way to hit those passes on the run and sometimes slow down what you may call those happy feet. But just for being a freshman, he's still doing a pretty good job of holding his own. I think he looked very poised and going forward, if he is a full-time starting quarterback for this football team, I think he has a really bright future and has the ability to be one of the greats because of what he can do with his feet and as he will develop with his arm. Offenses are only as good as the offensive line, and the Rocket O-line has been inconsistent this season. At this point in time, what can you do to get that chemistry going for the offensive line? You, you can't just write it off. You still have half of October and all of November to play, but that offensive line has just not been able to put together four full quarters of a game this season. Yeah, you know, and it's slightly been, you know, underwhelming to, to watch how the Rockets have been playing. You see the guys up front, Tyler Long, Mitch Berg, local guys. Bryce Harris, one of the big men up front that's been anchoring this team for seven seasons. You know, um, this is something that's interesting, you know, um, and why they're not getting those yards. And, and you, you wonder if there's guys banged up up front. Um, is, is there injuries or is there, you know, just schematic things that other teams are doing that the Rockets aren't making the adjustments with to pick up on? You know, Brian Kobach not getting the yards that he need. Daquan Finn, you watched the game where he had a lot of pressure on him a lot of the time and a lot of, on a lot of snaps. At one point, he got sacked, you know, five or six times in 12 snaps. You know, so things like that can't go on, not blaming the offensive line completely. But something schematically up front has to work or they need to look down the line to look to replace some guys. To, to fill those holes because, you know, going forward, this offense has been typically explosive, and it usually starts with the run game opening up that pass game. And, Mark, right now, you know, the struggle has been real. Struggle was real on defense in the first quarter against Central Michigan. What did the Chips do to, to maybe catch the Rocket D off guard on Saturday? You know, I think they play with tempo, you know, and they play with confidence and some swagger. You know, obviously, you know, with Pimpleton, he's able to get out there and, and play multiple roles, you know, whether it's uh, playing that quarterback or just moving things around and making it tricky for the Toledo defense. They were able to get to the outside, get to the edge, you know, and I think that's kind of what slowed what, what the game plan in the first half was. In the second half, the defense tightened up. They did an excellent job of just slowing it down for the Toledo to have a 17 point straight. And I think this t defense is finding out that Max and Hook, you know, this young football player is going to become a star for this team as he continues to develop. But as far as, you know, the defense stopping things, you know, I, I don't think that they'll have these problems going forward. The offense just has to score a few more points because holding the team to just under 25 points is pretty solid. That defense will be tested on Saturday, though. Western Michigan comes into the glass bowl. The Broncos are riding high. They looked really good against Kent State on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this team is, a, is, is about highs and lows as well, just kind of like our Rockets. So you don't know what team you're going to get out the Broncos, but you're going to know that you're going to get one of the best coach teams you're going to see in the MAC. They come out week in, week out with a solid game plan. They've played a tough schedule like Rockets, and they've also lost their fair share of road games. So with that road game being a, th a theme for the Rockets and not just the Rockets, but other teams, you know, they lost at Ohio University. Things are going to have to get curious here. You're going to wonder if the Rockets are going to step 
step up and really play their best football. They're playing for the MAC championship hopes. That's it on the line this weekend. Everything that you want, all your goals are still ahead of you. you got to win this week so you wonder how the Rockets going to bounce back and play at home after having another, you know, very close loss. A lot of outside noise about this program right now, about this entire athletic department. Yeah. Is this a situation where the, the football team can kind of put their backs against the wall and say, hey, there's nobody else around that can do this. we got to do it ourselves and, and have that proverbial chip on their shoulders as they go in against the Broncos? Absolutely, you know, um, and they shouldn't hear that outside noise. The outside noise should be the, exactly what it is, is outside noise. you got to focus on what's going on in the locker room and what it means to you as an individual because everybody's going to write the narrative that you create. And if the football team comes out here and show us what they are about, you know, these classes and classes of high-ranked high prospects, when are you going to step up and show everybody who's making this noise what you're really about? So the coaches have to challenge the players to step up and just play their best football and play without that weight on their shoulders. You can't worry about what guys in the media are saying. You can't worry about what the Broncos are thinking. The Rockets just have to come out and do what they do best is execute and finally get some rocket fuel in that offense. And after this week's home game against Western Michigan, we get into November and Maction in midweek games, and it's going to be a really fast November. The Rockets have got to get some momentum building beginning this Saturday. I want to thank Mike Robinson from the Little Rocket Radio Network for joining us. Mike, Rob, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.